guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Fab and Mo. I'm Adeli, and today we're gonna to be talking about catheters and bladder incontinence. Ugh, what a topic, right? So hope you stay tuned and make sure you subscribe below, press the red button, follow me on IG, Fab underscore NMO, and Facebook, Fab NMO. already know or don't know yet I was diagnosed with neuromyelitis optica at the age of 27 if you want to know more about my story click back to my first video and hear my story of how I was diagnosed but today we're gonna to be talking about one symptom that is very common in autoimmune diseases and that is bladder incontinence bladder incontinence incontinence basically is the place where your urine holds before leaving the body Bladder incontinence is basically the overstimulation of your bladder, which is preventing you from peeing all the way out, or um, can be causing your UTIs like it was in my symptoms, or can be causing a whole bunch of issues that are really not good for your urine, let alone your kidneys. So pay attention if you're going through bladder incontinence situations with your autoimmune disease. If you're going through an, a bladder incontinence situation, the first thing in, is call a urologist. Have a doctor or somebody refer you to a urologist. The urologist is who's going to be examining that part of the area and who specializes in bladder. When you go to a urologist, let them know that you're having these types of symptoms. It is actually very common, and especially in women, to have urine incontinence and not because of an autoimmune disease, but because of other things like having a stroke, because of birthing issues, and it really has nothing to do with age. And it has nothing to do with physical fitness. It just comes as it please. And once it comes to you, you kind of have to resolve the issue. Bladder incontinence really doesn't have a specific age when it gets to targeting, you know, the person that it's going to target. It can um, obviously happen to a person with an autoimmune disease, but also anybody who's had a stroke or anybody who's had going through a lifestyle change, it might trigger your bladder incontinence. Sometimes it's something that can be fixed quickly and sometimes it's something that it needs a little bit more than just a little pill. When you go to see your urologist, be prepared. Make sure you have your medical history. Make sure you know when this problem started and how you felt and how everything is going. Are you leaking? Are you just not holding? Do you feel the urgency right away? They're gonna ask you all that, so be prepared. In some cases, they might want you to keep a diary of your bladder to see how much is your intake and how much is your out. And one of the very first things they'll do is test your urine make sure you don't have any infections or anything of that sort of matter if you're all good there and you don't have an infection then and you still keep having the problem then most likely they'll send you to get a bladder scan and a bladder scan is basically a scan of your bladder in which they basically just see how big is your bladder how much can it hold and after you've gone to the bathroom how much is left in there and personally for me that's when they started detecting a problem with me in the bladder scan because I was holding a lot of fluid, but I was not letting go of fluid. So that's when the bladder incontinence situation started getting more serious for me. On top of the fact that I was already kind of peeing myself anyways, and that was part of my symptoms. And if they really want to go far and beyond, which they kind of did for me, they'll also do the following test. And I'm most likely gonna butcher these names. Cystoscopy, which is basically when they go in through your urethra, all the way up to your bladder with a little camera, a really, really small camera, your wigs are in the procedure, and they go up and they just make sure that the lining of the urethra and the bladder is good. If there's anything out of the normal in there, that's the perfect time for them to check maybe if there's some type of blockage with any rocks or anything like that. Another study they might want to do on you is what's called urodynamics. Basically, it's a study of the urethra and your bladder and basically to see in conjunction how they work together and if they're properly functioning together. That basically what they do is they pump saline into your bladder and they make sure that your bladder does its job of holding and if it doesn't, does your urethra allow for it to go past or does it hold it? So it's basically a muscle or nerve kind of testing. Um, I didn't get that done personally, it was like too much. So treatment starts with yourself. First of all, lifestyle change. Things that can trigger the bladder to have an incontinence situation for you to leak in yourself 
are things like alcohol, coffee, too much of a salty food, things of that nature can definitely trigger your bladder. Also, if you exercise and just leave a healthy lifestyle, that should help out working your bladder out. But if that doesn't work, then you have to go to the next step, which is medication. Now, there are all sorts of medications out there. Um, I know personally for me, I've tried VessiCare to kind of help relax the muscle, the bladder muscle, and that really didn't work for me. I was still having the bladder spasm with the medication anyways. At that time, obviously I didn't know I had an autoimmune disease, but that didn't work for me. But I mean, it works for other people and that might just be your one-time stop and how you resolve your bladder incontinence problem. Another treatment um, that can also help you in the most natural way is therapy. A therapy to help you be able to control your muscles, stimulate your muscles, and basically practice your Kegels. Kegels does help with this situation. Squeezing the muscles so the urine doesn't void or come out or anything of that nature. Another treatment is basically biofeed, um, electrostimulation. Basically, it's an electronic device that they put um, around your anal and your vagina part. You guys can go see that in another place because I'm not putting a picture of that. And basically, it gives you electrostimulation so the muscle, which is the bladder that is contracting, it'll help ease the muscle so you can be better able to avoid. Now let's get to the real deal. I tried all this and it still was not helping me. And I was in return getting a lot of UTIs, which was one of my first symptoms that I didn't understand why I was getting so many UTIs. And it was because I was not voiding all the way. If you don't void all the way, all that urine is gonna retract and go back up to your kidney, which is gonna cause further damage and that's not good. So when my urologist suggested to me cathing might be a good thing, I looked at him with like a hundred heads. Are you crazy? Catheterizing myself? Ugh. But honestly, it's not as bad as it seems. Well, now it's not because now I've gotten used to it. And I'll be talking about more of that as the video goes on. But the very last treatment that I've tried, it's definitely a life changer for me. And it is Botox to the bladder. Mm-hmm. I know cool Botox can go in any other place other than your face. Personally for me, it was actually done in a hospital. I was uh, sedated all the way. They go up your urethra with um, a small little tube and they inject um, into your bladder some Botox. It is not painful. You don't feel a thing. And actually it's changed my life for the better. I will continue to use this method because it's the only way that I feel like I can enjoy myself. I can go to a concert and actually not pee myself. I can, you know, drink that beer that I've been wanting to drink or drink the margarita or drink the coffee or drink whatever it is I'm gonna drink and not have that urge of having to run to the bathroom or pee myself basically. catheters catheter is just the word alone like I was like Ugh, I don't know about this it sounds crazy but my urologist he recommended that I cath and I was like but why like this is insane I shouldn't be cathing like I'm not that disabled or whatever like you know yes I keep getting these infections but whatever and I'm not gonna lie to you the first couple of times that I tried it even though they taught me at the office I was horrified horrified because this is something I've never done before and the benefits are instant so it kind of like I was horrified but I wanted to do it because I wanted to feel better and I wanted to not get these infections anymore that was being caused by who knows what at this point I still wasn't even diagnosed so I was just trying to find a solution for every little symptom that I was having and this was me trying to find a solution for my bladder incontinence at the time, which was related to an MO, which at that point I had no clue of. What are catheters? A catheter is a very, very small tube that goes into your bladder, and in my case, since I'm a woman, through the urethra into the bladder, to allow for the urine to drain freely. And why is this important? It is very important to drain your bladder because if you don't drain that bladder, all that can back up and go into your kidneys and you're gonna have one nasty infection. 
Now, who casts and what way be the reasons that one person might cast? Well, number one is a spinal cord injury. Spinal cord injuries are one of the reasons why people cast on a daily. Conditions that affect the nerves surrounding the muscles of the bladder. Conditions like having a stroke. When you have a stroke, your stroke not only affects your face and your arm and your leg, but it affects internal organs as well. And one of those organs might be your bladder. Also for conditions like myself, NMO, MS, and autoimmune diseases. Another reason you might cast is if you're in the hospital getting surgery for whatever reason, you are unable to get up. They might put a cast on you and you might just be draining. You don't even know if you're going to the bathroom. Basically to rest your bladder. Now there are different types of catheter with time that I've learned. There are travel size catheters, there are at home catheters, there are pre-lubed catheters, there are different sizes in catheters. There's so many options in catheters. One of the things I'm going to critique and kind of recommend for my catheter friends, catheter companies out there, is to make them at least a little bit more fashionable. When I pulled this thing out of my purse, I mean, it's not that pretty and people are just asking me, what the heck is that? I can't say a tampon because most of them are clear plastic or they say nice and big, you know, the brands and then what it is and the size. Catheters are usually only offered through prescription, so it's not like something you go to Walmart or Target or wherever and just, hey, I need to buy some catheters. No, they're usually prescribed by a doctor. So let's get into the type of catheters that we have today. Now, most companies will send you samples. They want you to use their products, right? And it just all depends on insurance and who covers and how much will they cover, depending on your necessity. I reached out to the company Cure, C-U-R-A-E, which I'm gonna leave the description down below of their website. And the company Cure was nice enough to send me so many samples of different catheters. They sent me all types of catheters, including from travel size to at-home kits. So the first catheter we're gonna talk about is the Cure Twist. And it looks like a little pen. It is really nice in the fact that you can kind of just take this out of your purse and nobody's gonna ask you, what is that? I'm gonna give you a close-up of the catheter. Thank God I got a manicure, huh? You see really well in there. There's like a little tube in there. It already comes pre-looted, so you don't have to worry about looting it. This is like perfect if you're going to a concert or if you're just going to hang out and you don't want to really bring a big purse and, you know, carry around like a plastic thing huge, which is catheter. I'm going to open this here in front of you guys. I have not opened this because this is not the particular catheter that I use um, because I usually am at home or friend my friend's house that they know I use this so this is all sterile let's be clear of that this is all sterile stuff um this is the catheter itself and it comes pre-looted which is super nice because you don't have to pop anything um this is woman catheters by the way this is not a man catheter and like I said you can kind of just take it out do your business and throw it away it is not reusable because they do come sterile for a reason. It's nice, I like it. I might just switch over to this one. So the next one is kind of what I've used. It's a cure catheter, and it comes in this packaging like this, nice and clear uh, package. I'm not sure really how cure works, um, but this does not come preluded, but it is sterile, but it's not preluded. Um, and this is a French 12 inch, French 12 catheter. Um, and when it says French, it means like the whole, like how big, the tube is gonna be depending on your urethra. So there are sizes you need to try on. And if it's too big, then get rid of it. It does come sterile, they all come sterile. And basically what I'm guessing here, since this does not come pre-looted, you open it up, you always wanna hold it by the top because you don't wanna hold it anywhere here. That's where it's gonna be touching your private part, right? I'm guessing you have to buy a loop for it or they provide you for a loop for it after. I'm not sure because these are samples that they send me once again. And you kind of dip it in the lube and you insert it in yourself to void your urine. Now, this is what I'm talking about when they say French sizing. So this is a French 12 sizing and I'm gonna put it closer to the camera. And although it's that long, it doesn't mean that it has to go all the way in, by the way. Okay, there you can see it. It has those holes there. Insert it. Um, it has holes all around the sides, so you can your urine can be able to flow more naturally out. 
um, and you just kind of hold it in place until your urine or until your bladder is fully voided. Again, this does not come pre lubed and I will throw this away. Now, they were nice enough as well to send me some male catheters. And again, this is not pre looted or anything. Um, this is more for me to show you guys. For any males out there who are cathing or might need to cath or are considering cathing. This one is the Cure Catheter for Men and it's also a French 12 sizing and it also comes sterile in the package. So you can touch it all here but it's all sterile inside. Basically it's pretty long because men obviously need a longer stick, right? Hold it by the top here because you don't want to get this dirty. Um, this does not come pre-lubed as well. So again, I don't know what is it with Cure and not coming pre-lubed. I guess you can buy your own and just stick it in there. But wouldn't it dirty it more? Yes. It's a pretty long one because this is for males. Okay. And again, this has the, this has one, two, three, or one, two holes. Oh. You can see them right there. This is inserted in the men's penis and they're able to avoid in the bathroom their bladder. So this is the Cure Ultra ready to use catheter. And this is really, really small. I like this. Again, this is for me, woman, not a man. And it's really, really small and it's an all French 12 for I don't know, whatever reason. Basically, it comes already pre-looted. So this is what I'm talking about that if you're gonna take this out of your purse, like how embarrassing that it has to say all that. Like, what if it comes out of your purse and you can't get down on time so somebody else picks it up and just starts reading, you know, oh, what is this? You can't say it's a tampon. I mean, you don't, I don't know. I just find that they should be putting more discretion into this because this is a personal matter. This is not something that if it falls out of my purse or anything, everybody should be reading. But this is what I'm talking about. Like it just says all that sizing, the company. Just, I don't know, it's, I find it a little embarrassing. So make them more cute, less description. I mean, we get a package. The package should save the description, not every single catheter. This one I'm going to open up here in front of you guys. Like I said, this is already pre -looped. And this I can see myself using if I'm going to a concert or something or the movies. Okay. Again, you always want to hold it by the part that's obviously not going to be inserted into your body part. And yes, this does come preluded. I can feel all that stuff. Again, this is a woman's catheter. And you can see the pre -lube on there. And on the this end here you can see the holes stick it in void your bladder do not reuse if it falls on the floor you throw it away as well I'm just saying now I thought it was pretty neat that you can have at-home kits um, in case you cannot do it yourself somebody else can do it for you because let's be real not all the time you're gonna be able to do it for yourself most of the time though always do it by yourself let's go on to the next one so the next one is a cure catheter kit and basically this is a whole kit you, this is something like you see in the hospital basically and this is kind of for somebody who can't cast on their own who needs help casting and let's be real some people might need help because they can't feel fingers or they just can't get up and walk to the bathroom as fast or whatever the reason might be this is something I imagine you're gonna have at home. You're not gonna be going out with it because you need to kind of wash your hands, put gloves, put the loop, all that stuff. So this is more of an at-home type of catheter um, that you're gonna use. What's in it, um, basically you have your, your gloves. You're gonna have kind of like a bed sheet so you don't get your bed or your chair wet. It's uh, water resistant so you can put it under you and you don't need to make a mess. It comes with this little wipe with the catheter. And this is what I was talking about, the other catheters from Cure that didn't come with the lube. This one comes with a lube packet. You see this right here? Also comes with this baggie. Now there are also other companies out there who make catheters, not just Cure. At my urologist's office, I kind of told them that I wanted a few samples so I can show you guys. So I personally use the magic glow. I think it's the most convenient one to use because it already comes pre-lubed 
and it's already sterile in there. All you have to do is just open it and use it. Now the Magic Go is made by the company Bard, B-A-R-D, and I will also leave the link down below. And the very cool neat part is that the way that they designed this, it has a hole in the opening. As you can see there, it has kind of a hole there. And that's basically for you to be able to hang it up if you need to hang it up if you're in a public place or the sticker or this stick that comes with it is super super strong and you can kind of attach it to a wall hang it to a wall so you're not putting it on the floor now when you open this as you can see the part that you hold is the first part because obviously you don't want to use the catheter itself um holding it from the tip because that's the part that goes in you and you don't need an infection. So if you're typically using catheters, you might know that you get a whole bunch in a box, and if you're not using catheters, you get a whole bunch in a box. Now, one of the other ones that I got from my urologist's office, Coloplast Men's To Go Catheter. This is a men's catheter. And it's almost the same thing as the pen, but obviously, as you guys can tell in size, it is way bigger because we know that there are ways longer. It's the same idea, it comes pre -lubed. And ready to use and what I like about requesting these free samples that you can get with a prescription obviously is that they give you so much information on all the types of catheters that they have for example cure cure literally sent me a whole box of catheters and so much information and what they're doing and what they're working on now cure here's my recommendation from a patient who actually uses catheters make them more cuter, less letters, so nobody notices that we're using catheters. For neutral wrapping, at the end of the day, I wanna thank these companies for making these great products for us because people like me and other people use them. Although this is not a sponsored video, I did ask for free samples and the company Cure sent me so many samples and I really wanna take the time to thank you, company Cure. And for the informational pamphlets and everything, you guys actually went the extra mile out of all the companies to inform me of all the different types of catheters that there are there again it all depends on your insurance because it is by prescription only anyways guys thank you so much for tuning in, in my video today and let's spread awareness on nmo hit the red button below subscribe like share follow me on facebook at fab nmo fab nmo instagram fab underscore nmo i'm always posting content about my day-to-day -day and what i'm doing this is just part of my day-to-day -day. please follow and have a fabulous day and thank you for tuning in bye